about the experiments in cinema in India, which have occurred in this century, it might help us to recall some of the experiments uh, which occurred in uh, last century, uh, starting with uh, Raja Harish Chandra's uh, Kalya Mardan, uh, with usage of uh, fantasy and uh, uh, newer camera techniques, experimenting with continuity. Uh, of course, uh, uh, also borrowing from techniques being developed by uh, various other filmmakers. Uh, and then, of course, the narrative cinema of post-independence era, uh, where there were storytelling techniques which were being explored and formulated. Uh, and uh, in the 1960s, with the editing uh, being an instrument of experimentation. Uh, in fact, I would like to show, uh, I, I would like to share with you a clip uh, and uh, urge you to have a look at it and then come back to this discussion. Uh, clip one, uh, which uh, pertains to Pramod Pati's experimental film, Explorer. And you will see, uh, uh, you will notice, and you'll be, you'll be able to enjoy the way in which editing of uh, images and musing and, and, and the juxtaposition uh, that he has used to create a sensory experience. So have a look at the clip and then we come back to this discussion. The second clip which I want to share with you uh, pertains to an experimental travel log, uh, which was uh, put together by uh, Sukhdev uh, for Films Division of India. Uh, it's entitled India 67. So he traveled across the length and the breadth of the country uh, to record the vignettes uh, from uh, various parts of the country uh, and collected them in India 67. Uh, so have a look at this entire uh, uh, longish piece, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which pertains to the clip too, and we will resume our discussion. Okay, so I have picked up three strands in order to map out uh, experiments uh, in cinema in this century. And the first strand which I have picked up is the popular cinema in India, which is mainstream Hindi cinema. Uh, but of course, there are other cinemas also where experiments have occurred uh, and which have been called new wave in Malayali cinema and new wave in Tamil and Bengali cinema. Uh, but uh, uh, just to give us a um, idea of how how these things are happening, we could start a, a discussion from Mani Ratnam's Dilse and Yuva. In fact, uh, entire works of Mani Ratnam were very experimental. Uh, he was creating a kind of a juxtaposition uh, between the narrative, and then he was relieving that that tension through uh, uh, you know mounting these uh, elaborate. Uh, uh, songs which were almost like standalone video art. So they were like, uh, they were created uh, with the costume drama, music, uh, and uh, the Abhinay acting. Um, and of course, there was a narrative uh, uh, digesses also, which was part of this, uh, this, uh, these song sequences, uh, much more noticeable in Dilse, um, you know, where that famous song on the train. Uh, and then of course, there were other songs which were enacted. There was this very beautiful song of uh, um, uh, Dilse, the, um, the title song and some other songs. So it, it, if you uh, get a chance and I would encourage you to have a look at the film. Uh, so you will find this kind of an experiment. And then there's another experiment he conducted in Yuba where he's interviewing three stories and bringing the main uh, characters, the protagonist of these stories in a, in a one particular scene at an accident scene in, um, uh, in, uh, during a sequence. Uh, so borrowing from some of the films which were being, uh, you know, these multi-narrative films which were being constructed in South America and in Europe. So he was trying to amalgamate the narrative with some kind of a uh, experimental storytelling. Yet these, the, these popular cinema are very much about storytelling and 
uh, a little bit of an experiment with the content. Then Anurag Kashyap uh, brought in a very different idiom in Dev D, uh, the narrative style, the, the story style, but also the use of music. And Dibaka Banerjee in Khoslaka Ghosla, uh, the way the film is uh, created uh, as, as a very, uh, you know, it recalls the Rishikesh Mukherjee's uh, films where uh, he's uh, trying to create a uh, drama of the middle class and love uh, sex or uh, dhoka. Uh, uh, another interesting, uh, again, putting three stories together, uh, ex experiment like you are, but uh, also a very documentary feel to it. Uh, Bijay, uh, Bijoy Nambiar Shaitan, uh, again, uh, using media fold and uh, storing storytelling techniques uh, aligned with how the characters are interweaving tales. And Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra's Rang De Basanti, uh, retelling the past, revisiting the past. Well, uh, uh, the trend perhaps was set by Lagan in 2001, but definitely Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra's and uh, creating a kind of a uh, disjuncture where the, you, you know, the, the present day characters also are um, characters of uh, drama of past so, and the parallel intercutting of the two. And Zoya Akhtar's recent Gully Boy, uh, Vishal Bharadwaj's uh, trilogy of uh, adapting uh, Shakespeare to, uh, to the Indian uh, mise en scene. So in a, in a way, vernacularization of Shakespeare. But uh, it's not just a vernacularization of Shakespeare, but the kind of politics and the tension and the mise and the setting, the atmosphere he inaugurates in these three films. And a very prominent uh, filmmaker, uh, Aranya, uh, filmmaker of uh, Aranya Kandam, uh, Tiag Rajan, Kumar Rajan, using uh, again, uh, style and the content, uh, which are, uh, you know, creating time loops and creating a disjuncture in time. Again, storytelling techniques, uh, yet staying with the popular idioms, and Sri Ram Raghavan, another filmmaker who's made Badlapur, Andhadun. So again, a surfeit of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, cinematic experiments, but within the storytelling, the mainstream. So th th these are popular cinemas, but of course there is a resurgence of Bhojpuri cinema and uh, some, some other vernacular cinemas, uh, which could be looked at as alternative cinemas in India, uh, these different kinds, the, these other kinds of experiments uh, which, which have been occurring. Another kind of alternative cinema in India has uh, occurred where the filmmakers are pushing the boundaries of the narrative cinema and almost uh, transcending into philosophy, into uh, creating a more artistic cinema. So Kamal Swaroop's Om Darbadar, although it was made in the 1980s and, and it became more, but it has become a more occult phenomena in the 21st century, influencing a large number of filmmakers uh, to uh, carry out and use these kinds of experiments which have been used in Om Darbadar. And then uh, Kaushik Mukherjee, who goes by his moniker Q, uh, he has made Gandu, Tashir Desh, uh, films which uh, are highly political in nature using experimental uh, uh, jump cut uh, kind of a, a film uh, recalling the French wave uh, cinema and um, uh, use, usage of music and multiple, uh, multiple uh, uh, strands of storytelling, often the uh, of, often uh, uh, involving the audience's attention to construct the complete uh, uh, the the complete uh, narrative, and of course Anand Gandhi's ship of uh, Theseus and uh, Chetanya Tam Tamhane, who has been making films with uh, political consciousness, uh, trying to uh, recreate. Uh, what we call the parallel cinema of 1960s and 70s, and Gurvinder Singh uh, in his films, Anne Godida Dan, Char uh, you know, creating uh, again the aesthetics of the parallel cinema, uh, staying close with the, uh, with the cinematic aesthetics. Yet these filmmakers are aligning themselves with the storytelling techniques. So, uh, 
So there, there is an experiment with content and there is a experiment with digestus, there is experiment with characterization. Uh, yet uh, in popular cinema, you will find most of these films are uh, very industrial in nature, large uh, uh, budgets uh, and uh, deploying all the aesthetics of a uh, of, of big budget and studio films and alternative cinema uh, all uh, are uh, are not employing big budgets uh, they are more intimate crews and uh, uh, using cin cinema verite styles or guerrilla uh, guerrilla filmmaking styles or uh, uh, you know th th these are smaller budget films but they do try to uh, use the similar kind of uh, uh, filmmaking styles which are used in big budget industrial films. And the third strand of experiment can be found in experiments where expanded cinema is the main concern of the filmmakers. And uh, uh, many of these filmmakers are also uh, you know, creating uh, not just a vernacular cinema, but they are going back to the roots and they are looking at Indian aesthetics and they are trying to um, uh, they're trying to cull a, a an expanded cinema, which uh, which which is installation, uh, which is making use of different lenses, experiments, uh, and because they are mostly made on zero budgets or very little budgets, and they are and these filmmakers are mostly also using their own money and uh, um, uh, using a small crew, sometimes employing a uh, very young crew of the first time. Um, crew members who are who would work for very little money or uh, uh, who are not afraid of experiments uh, so you know this is one one aspect uh, when we study cinema that we find and when we interact with the uh, uh, various artists who are uh, who who are engaged in cinematography sound art um, other for other other uh, artistic uh, um, in other artistic contributions in a film uh, many of them uh, of course, um, not just a mat matter of economics, but are sometimes afraid to experiment. But these filmmakers, uh, you know, the, the list of whom I have culled out for you, uh, they work with very small crew and mostly work with crew, which is with, and they work with a crew uh, for a very long time over a couple of films. And perhaps some of them have actually worked with um, editors, and uh, sound artists, uh, uh, sound recordists, and uh, um, creative contributors uh, through the entire uh, length of their works. So um, I'd like to start our discussion with Amit Datta. Um, perhaps the most unarguably, actually, the most prominent of the uh, filmmakers in this experiments, uh, experimental cinema. Um, Amit Datta uh, started his work, his work with Kramash. Uh, Kramash uh, is a Sanskrit word, uh, which actually means uh, to be continued. Uh, Kramash is not an end, it's just like a pause. Uh, and this was a film that he made um, at a very early stages in, in, in his career. Uh, and uh, in 2007, uh, an experimental short film and uh, you will find this film in uh, the clip number three. Uh, there's a YouTube link to this entire film. So do have a look at it and uh, then we resume this discussion. Okay, so uh, since you have seen this film now, so uh, you would find that uh, the very act with, in, in which the, the, the film is made is, uh, first of all, it is made in 35 millimeter. So many of the experimental filmmakers, uh, even in the digital age, are making use of uh, uh, older techniques and innovating them. And uh, uh, you will find that, you would have found that the, uh, the imagery and the narration, uh, in fact, uh, uh, they do not 
they 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 seem to create a a, a disorienting effect it's it's a, it's a kind of a you know you do not know what to look at and what to hear so there there is a very there, there are very definitive sound images and there are very definitive uh, uh, visual images uh, that appear in the film and uh, you know the it's 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 these it's it's a com complete uh, sensorium uh, sensorial experience which does not really rely on you know what's the meaning of what uh, the filmmaker is uh, trying to make and uh, it's it's the sensory experiences uh, that the film is, uh, uh, is is kind of creating and he's making use of powerful narratives uh, known narratives you know, one of the reasons why filmmakers would make use of known stories is that the audience is then freed with the cause and you know trying to create a cause and effect continuity they know the narrative already so that curiosity curiosity of what happens next is gone and the senses are then free to just experience the images so he is using these uh, myths and uh, you know the popular stories uh, so that we can actually uh, just uh, uh, you know just revel in the experiences uh, some of the other films that he has made over the years, which have left an impact, almost all his films have left an impact. But Admi ki aurat ki or anne kahaniya, the man's, woman's, and other stories. Again, he makes use of uh, mythology, universal and personal mythology, and uh, uh, he is uh, using these short stories in this in this particular film. In order to become, uh, to in in order to rel, uh, in uh, rev, uh, you know, in order to reveal and revel into meta language of film, so uh, there is an uh, attempt uh, to uh, locate the concrete and locate the fantastic, and somewhere uh, you know, you know, there's an imagination. There's this this whole idea of uh, you know, the present consciousness. And somewhere in between, he's trying to locate the film. So it's it's actually a film experiment which goes beyond the film. He's recalling uh, several other artistic forms here. Uh, then Son Chiri, uh, another uh, a film which is very uh, philosophical in nature. And then Nan Sook, uh, which is a very different kind of a, a biographical film. It's It pertains, it's based on biography of a 18th century a Pahadi painter, Nain Sook. Uh, but the, the way the film is constructed, uh, because it's, it's not a hagiographic account of uh, Nain Sook, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it actually just escapes all kinds of categories when, when it comes to making of a film. It's a cross between a documentary and a fiction because there are uh, stage, staging of uh, vignettes uh, from Nain Sook's life. Uh, it also it goes beyond the idea of narrative and looks at you know uh, trying to create an actual experience of the yester world and it also tries to uh, reconstruct uh, what kind of a mental state Anansuk was perhaps uh, you know the the filmmaker is trying to reimagine that his his point of view and his his state of mind. Uh, while uh, he was painting uh, the the absolutely stunning miniatures, uh, and then of course, uh, so it's it's like in his filmmaking, he's trying to approximate Nansuk's brushwork, and uh, the way he is uh, uh, making uh, use of observations. So the filmmakers try to reimagine Nansuk's life through reimagining, uh, you know, how he constructed Nansuk constructed images and to use that in the film. And then there's another, uh, you know, uh, uh, biographical film, The Seventh Walk, uh, that he has uh, uh, created. Uh, again, Seventh Walk is, uh, uh, again, it kind of uh, uh, escapes the category of uh, uh, a biographical film uh, and delves into, uh, you know, uh, almost the experiences, there's, there's a recreation of the experiences and uh, the inner life, uh, what uh, the filmmaker, what the artist would have felt at that time. So, and then uh, uh, very recently, uh, he has made uh, a film on 
a craftsman who appears who comes across a um, a piece of rock uh, rather a huge uh, land mass of rocks and then ends up creating uh, a temple around it so here there is a there's a trailer uh, the film is not available for uh, open access viewing the trailer is available so i've just lined it up for you clip 3a is amit datta's trailer of the unknown craftsman so just notice the kind of images that he's creating you will find there's some kind of a contiguous contiguity in all his films the kind of images that he creates uh, he lets the eyes stay on the images for a very long time uh, there is no attempt to cut the images at a fast pace uh, he lets the narrative flow uh, and uh, he lets the eyes dwell upon an experience so there's always a uh, there's always an attempt in his films to allow the audience to enter into the in, into the audio visual so have a look at this clip and then we uh, continue our discussion uh, the second uh, filmmaker which i have lined up for you is kabir mohanty uh, again kabir mohanty is known much more for his short films and uh, its installation films uh, uh, he makes use of film and video artist techniques uh, in order to create his works so his uh, his first work was riaz in 19 which was uh, uh, which he published in 1990 and uh, riaz uh, was just like uh, the title riaz a uh, riaz is a way of a, it, it's a form of a practice it's it's a word used for practiced in in music uh, and he makes use of uh, a similar kind of a technique as one does in riaz like you know one starts and then there are one starts and fits and starts and then one pauses and goes back and if there is a bit of a mistake one goes back again so that's a kind of uh, film that he ended up making approximating uh trying to stay close with the idea of riaz and uh, uh in fact one of his trademark uh, uh, uh aesthetics is uh, use of uh, mobile camera so where he he would uh, not try to uh, clean up the images and uh, uh you know if he would let the 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 function of light remain the same so would not touch up the cinematography and uh, uh Uh, it, this film was also uh, was done in a way where uh, the camera allowed uh, things to happen, and uh, so th there were uh, you know the distances. There was no attempt to try and create a particular kind of a uniformity in camera techniques, uh, and the film itself was based on improvisation, which is what Riaz is all about. Uh, then there were some of his other works. Uh, um uh, in 1996 he uh, created home now i feel i don't know anything in 2001 uh then hand held in 2009 in memory in 2012 uh and uh, a very recent film of his uh in 2013 20 end of 2012 and 2013 was song of, of an ancient land uh so all his films have uh, been installation arts uh and uh, uh, they have been shown around the world and uh, uh in fact songs a song for an ancient land uh, uh, looks at kabir and kabir's music and how uh, you know kabir's music has traveled from uh, the yester year uh, to the contemporary times so uh, kabir mohanty uh let's a very free kind of a inaugurates a very free kind of a cinematography in his works and then uh i come to zarina bhim ji a very prominent film of uh, hers is yellow patch but it's is installation art so uh it's it's not uh, it's not just a stand alone film it's it's a com it's a part of an entire installation that she uh that she creates so zarina uh, bhim ji has uh, roots in india in uganda in africa and uh, you know she she uh, inquires into the 
uh, image into objects uh, what make make up images and of course there is a, a, there's a very self reflexive uh, uh, notation in his cinema uh, in her cinema uh, so she she in a way kind of surveys and she makes use of film uh, she ma makes use of photography and installation as a form of exploring uh, different forms of uh, cinematic arts uh, sometimes her locations are open studios sometimes they are in old factories so uh, and uh, and of course there is a lot of amb ambiguity complexity in her works uh, so out of blue is her earlier work uh, which was published in 2002 and then yellow patch in 2011 and uh, zangbar which is about her visit to zanzibar in 2015 and uh, uh, she she tries to bring an immersive uh, single screen uh, films uh, in, and installations uh, and makes use of photography to then resonate with with her films so i have lined up a clip for you uh, for her from uh, her short uh, zanzibar zangbar uh, clip 5 uh, and sorry, I forgot to mention clip four uh, pertain to Kabir Mohanty's song from an ancient land. So, you know, perhaps you can go back to clip four first and then look at clip five, which is Zarina Bhimji, uh, Zang Zanzibar. So clip six uh, pertains to Ashish Abhikunthak's uh, Dancing Othello. Uh, and another experiment experimental film. Uh, so have a look at it and then we speak about Ashish Avikuntak. So Avikuntak uh, is uh, an experimental filmmaker who started as an anthropologist. And uh, he started making these films as experimental anthropology actually and started in, in his oeuvre, in his works that he has put out uh, over the years. He started in 1998 with Etc., which was a short film. And then he has gone on to create uh, very experimental works. So Brin La, Brihan Lala Ki Khel Kali, Dancing Othello, that's the English title, uh, was published in 2001 and is one of the most abiding uh, experiments in Shakespeare, uh, which have been made in recent times in India, uh, where he makes, uh, where he try, uh, tries to juxtapose Kathakali uh, and uh, Shakespearean drama, and uh, has, uh, uh, has been able to uh, uh, collaborate with Ajay Raina, very uh, well-known actor. Sorry. And of course, uh, then he has gone on to make End Note, Antaral, uh, 2005, and uh, Vakra Tunda Swaha and Katho Upanishad. Katho Upanishad has been um, much discussed uh, for its uh, uh, use of uh, jump cuts and um, filmmaking techniques, and churning of Kali for its uh, very astounding images. Uh, and Kali of Emergency uh, and Glossary of Non-Human Love, uh, which is forthcoming, which, 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 is, which he has shown around in some exhibitions and some uh, festivals, but it is still not put out in. So see, see one of the features of uh, many of these experimental works and perhaps even a uh, problem is that many of these works are not available outside uh, festivals and outside exhibitions. So very difficult to access these uh, works and these, uh, uh, these artworks because they are made on very little budget and then the filmmaker doesn't have much money to market them. And even, they, even if they are available online, then the filmmakers is, is trying to you know, get some money back. So there's an attempt uh, and rightly so on part of the filmmakers to uh, you know, get something out of it. Many of them are working on a very low budget, small budget. Joshi Joseph's uh, uh, films, uh, he is a director who's worked uh, in films division for a very long time. And much of his work is a sort of a collision of uh, 
multi language systems where he's making use of malayali uh, which is his mother tongue uh, and uh, bangla which is his adoptive language and uh, various languages uh, where he's shooting his films in so he's made a large number of films uh, pertaining to northeast india uh, so i have uh, here a clip from in fact the whole not just a clip a whole of his film echo from pukpai hills uh, clip 7 is uh, his uh, uh, entire film is in which is uploaded on youtube have a look at it and there is a write up also uh, which i had read, i had uh, reviewed this film uh, some time back so if if you want to read that you can have a look at it now one of one of the uh, abiding features of his uh, cinema is uh, uh, staying with the uh, with the locality so where which, whichever location he is in uh, he tries to inaugurate and bring that atmosphere into his films uh, his films are also experimental when it comes to content uh, and and style uh, they are essayistic in nature tries to create an essay and not just a uh, not just a film and um, they are experimental uh, in the way he uh, allows his actors and uh his crew members uh to bring in their perspectives uh and uh, also how he does his his world his works are also can be considered ethnographic in the way that he studies his uh, subject for a very long time so he stays with his subject for a very long time again this is a feature of most of the experimental filmmakers unlike uh, the mainstream filmmakers Uh, whose works are very script based and who are very subject oriented experimental filmmakers stay with their subjects and their uh, obsessions for a very long time uh, so uh, responding to them in waves uh, in uh, uh, you know in in staying with the subject for a very long time trying to actually create an understanding within themselves uh, uh, regarding the subject and that's what that's what uh, you would find in joshi joseph's work as well that he stays with uh, whatever he is doing uh, for a uh, for a rather long time so this feature of the experimental filmmakers uh, that they stay with their subject for a very long time sets them apart from uh, the more mainstream commercial filmmakers and this is the reason then why their films are also or their works are also a little inaccessible uh, because they rely on the patronship uh, for making their films and for their livelihood and uh, um, please remember that many of them uh, you know are using their own money as well so whatever little they are earning i i'm a, i'm i'm aware of the fact that uh, Uh, many of these filmmakers like amit datta would uh, always use the money that he is able to collect or a little bit of contribution that he's able to collect when he shows his one film and then he uses that uh, money to then be able to make the second film so uh, this is one of the reasons so in a way you know they are the struggling artist and not there's no cliche there they, they are the struggling artist and they are always looking to showcase their work uh and uh, because they do not have that elaborative uh, elaborate uh, uh, marketing uh, regime the the they are not part of that industrial uh, film making concept um the next filmmaker which i have here uh, is kabir singh choudhury a very young filmmaker uh, only two three films uh, old um uh, and he makes use of uh, multidisciplinary uh uh you know techniques uh his uh, uh, he made a 42 minute long film good morning uh which was received well and uh, uh he has been a creative producer of very well known film mukti bhavan uh it is uh, uh, this uh, the full length film mehsampur mehsampur which is uh, based on life of uh, uh, rather the assassination of uh, the singer chamkila uh, and amar jyot uh, which is uh, one of his most astounding films works uh, where he makes use of uh, cinema verite techniques yet uh, uh, extremely 
uh, sorry, uh, extremely uh, uh, refined uh, way. Uh, so the, the, the Mehsampur is a very simple film of a filmmaker trying to retrace Chamkila and what has happened to him and uh, how he was assassinated, what were the reasons behind him, uh, behind it, and what he discovers while, uh, you know, he discovers complexity in politics and uh, competing narratives uh, that surround around Chamkila's death. And he also sees how people, various people are trying to profit and some people are trying to milk uh, the death. Uh, and, and it's a, it's a kind of a attempt to recall uh, you know, Chamkila and what happened to the other people who remained. So it's a film more about people who survived uh, uh, the assassination and the eyewitnesses who have been scarred by it, uh, uh, you know, mentally and psychologically. So it's a, it's a kind of a psychological uh, journey uh, in, a, in a sense. It's, it's a genre-defying cinema. It's not even fiction, not completely documentary. Uh, there is there is an attempt to uh, look at uh, the director's own experiences and what happens to him uh, during uh, the search, uh, his own breakdown. Uh, so uh, all in all, all out an experiment. And then uh, Chamkila himself was a very controversial uh, uh, singer. Uh, Amar Kanwar is another, in fact, Amar Kanwar is senior to many of these and uh, uh, perhaps one of the, uh, belongs to the similar age frame as Ashish Avikuntak. Uh, Amar Kanwar started as a documentary filmmaker and uh, then uh, flitted into uh, po politics, political cinema making and into uh, installation art. So Sovereign Tree is a complete installation uh, that he, a complete installation of film, uh, which is very political, but also other stories and other ideas. So it's a complete installation that he has uh, come up with. Uh, the, sovereign, uh, uh, the Sovereign Forest, actually. Uh, sovereign Tree is the name of the film, but Sovereign Forest is the entire collection, which includes films like A Love Story, The Scene of Crime, uh, and then uh, his other installation works uh, is the Tom First Pages, one, two, and three, which include films. Uh, so, you know, he makes short films and then culls, uh, then puts them together uh, as an installation art. But he's also made some very um, uh, political documentaries, Night of Prophecy and uh, The Lightning Testimonies, um, Azadi, Freedom, in 2002 was a very political film and many faces of madness and a season outside uh, again uh, political in nature and as i said he started as a filmmaker so the leather trilogy and lal hara le, le rakhe is uh, uh, which was made in 1992s because he started making films in 90s uh, were more documentary films so his works have been shown all around the world uh, and uh, mostly in uh, more and more in uh, documentaries, uh, sorry, more and more in museums now. Uh, the so Sovereign Forest being the latest one in 2015. And the last filmmaker I have here for you today is Shambhavi Call. Uh, you know, I've just like made assorted works and uh, here is a Yes, so it's very difficult once again to find uh, Shambhavi's work. So I couldn't really come up with a particular kind of a, for, of a clip, but you will be able to find her work strewn around uh, internet, sometimes a trailer or something. So uh, there is a website of uh, IFFR and you would find some of the works, uh, uh, the trailer of some of the works uh, highlighted there. Uh, Okay, so what kind of uh, film uh, Shambhavi is making? Again, uh, very uh, short films. Uh, uh, another feature of the experimental filmmakers is uh, the, uh, the length uh, that they dwell in. Uh, so the, the shorter lengths are much more suited to experiments. Uh, and Shambhavi is known for making films under 20 minutes. So her films would be five minutes or six minutes long. 
uh, very well known films are 21 Chitrakoot, Mount Song in 2013, and Night Noon, uh, which was made in 2014. These, these three films are very well known and anthologized across uh, books and uh, exhibitions related with experimental cinemas in 21st century. But you will also find Place of Landing and uh, some of her earlier films, Field of Stone, uh, as part of uh, uh, many of the anthologies. So Shambh Shambh what Shambhavi is doing uh, is she's using the short format and then she is uh, creating very spectacular images. So she's experimenting and she's also using, uh, instead of high quality films, she's using low frequency films. So uh, uh, her, her films would be shot on video and then blasted out, uh, 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 you know, to appear as if so there would be graininess in her film. Uh, she belongs to that, uh, that, that particular genre of incomplete cinema. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, she, she would uh, be using uh, geography. Uh, most, of the most of her films are about looking at geography, landscape, uh, you know, and cinematic memory, memory of human beings, and making use of, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, of, of, of colors uh, which stand out, which, uh, which jump out of the screen. Um, uh, so, and, and because of the length of these films and, and the way she creates them, they, they appear to be extremely, uh, extremely intimate kind of experiences, almost like, she would give you an experience and then run away. So uh, these are some of the filmmakers who are engaging in experiments in the expanded cinema. All in all, uh, the experiment in experimental cinema uh, constitutes a genre to itself uh, in the sense that these filmmakers uh, are consciously trying and much more in 21st century there, there is a trend of self-reflexivity and there is a trend of understanding the language of cinema itself so it's become very metalinguistic in nature and uh, filmmakers are uh, reflecting on their own cinematic ideas and also because cinema is now more than 100 years old so they 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 can refer to the earlier images and you will find this retrospective effect in the cinema uh, uh, occurring much more uh, and out of it uh, they are constructing new. So in the early cinema, uh, cinema stories aligned much more with literature. They, the early cinema, uh, uh, cinema makers, filmmakers were inspired by uh, mythologies, uh, legendary stories, religi religious themes, uh, and in fact, stories drawn from various writers uh, from all over the world. Uh, but more and more uh, uh, filmmakers of the 20th, 21st century are drawn towards films which were made in 20th century, and they are drawn towards the filmmakers and what kind of uh, self-conscious art were they producing. Uh, therefore, you will find uh, many of them returning to biographies uh, like in Amit Dutta, trying to understand the work of the artist. Uh, he made a very interesting film called Museum of Imagination, where uh, a, a contemporary, very well-known uh, uh, film uh, uh, art critic, B.N. Goswami, uh, appears as Nansuk. And it's a, it's a kind of a, sl a slanted uh, biography of Nansuk. So he appears as a consciousness of Nansuk tracing the Pahari painting and his works. So there, there are these experiments which are being conducted, uh, which are being undertaken by filmmakers, uh, but uh, uh, definitely inquiry into what cinematic images done, do uh, the, the politics also aligns with uh, what is the capacity of uh, the images, uh, how, how do they uh, create eddies and ideas for the filmmakers uh, before they even uh, create something for the audience. And then um, uh, experimental filmmakers always rely on audience and uh, their participation in uh, creating 
you know so there there is an artistic pole in them and then they are relying on the uh, the reception pole of the audience uh, to be able to interpret in various ways uh, their works uh, so the, this kind of a reliance is absent in popular and mainstream cinema but can be found in expanded cinema much more uh, where uh, the idea would would be that uh, the audience will be able to complete uh, the experiment. So that is what I have to say. If you have any questions, any queries, if you want to share some of your feedback or if you have some other ideas you want to discuss, you can always write to me. So here is my email address and uh, it would be nice to hear from you. And I could do only this much in one hour and uh, much, much has been left out. I've just given you a glimpse of the experiments. I hope some of you will undertake further studies in it or further inquiries. And I would be very happy to hear from you. So if you want to come have a cup of tea with me and we can talk about these various experiments in cinema. I wish you all the best and uh, enjoy yourself and enjoy watching uh, the clips that have been, re-watching the clips that I have shared with you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to me.